Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We have Old Crow, introduced in 1835, the original sour mash Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey today. Um, sold at 80 proof, aged three years, three years, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey versus Redemption High Rye Indiana bourbon whiskey, aged one year, 92 proof. Oh boy. Now, this is $23 a bottle on average. This is $10 or less per bottle on average, okay? Uh, I see some places will run specials, $8.99 a bottle, $9.99 generally, okay? So if you pay $10.99, you're paying too much, I do believe. Now, will Redemption High Ride be able to match up against Old Crow. Something tells me no, it will not, but uh, we'll see. Tomorrow we're going to plan to do Jim Beam versus Redemption High Ride. Now, by this point, you might be saying, what's the purpose of it? I mean, it's not been doing that well. You know, it's not really matching up. So why even do it? You made the point, $23 bottle of bourbon whiskey, not straight bourbon whiskey, mind you, just bourbon whiskey. And it's not really doing much better, if as good as the $10 bottles. Well, I would say to you, you're right. I don't disagree with that. My only point now is just curiosity. I'm just curious to see how it matches up with the uh, Old Crow, the Jim Beam, the Jim Beam Choice, the Jack Daniels. Oh, I forgot to put the labels. And the uh, Jack Daniels Green Label. I'm very curious about the Jim Beam Choice and the Green Label Jack Daniels, by the way. Just haven't had them in a while. Got a good amount left. So And I think after that, I'll do the Barton. I mean, can't grab it. <laughs> the Barton, I couldn't get it in my hand. The Barton American Whiskey. A blend. I think I'll put that up against Car Stairs, Club 400, Seagram 7, Ancient Age Preferred, and Beams 8 Star. By that time, I am assuming, I could be wrong, got some sugar on my pants from eating the king cake. I finished the king cake. <laughs> uh, I had to scrape some of that sugar off. Uh, they, they put too much sugar off on. Way too much. Don't need any more sugar the rest of today. Um, I was watching the girls make make those king cakes at Matherns. Okay. I say girls, the ladies, the women. Um, All right, so had my three cups of coffee, had the king cake. <laughs> that was a Cafe Bustello. Uh, I guess it's pretty dark roast espresso type. And uh, it was whole bean. I bought it at a store and uh, I had to grind it up. It took forever to grind it up in my grinder. That grinder doesn't hold too much uh, coffee. So I was just watching a movie and you know, I'm just grinding, grinding. But I, didn't, I didn't find that it tasted any. Oh, and it's by the way, it's owned by uh, Folgers, uh, not uh, you know Smuckers. It's owned by Smuckers now. But I didn't find it was any better than uh, the Great Value. 
Okay. The great value medium roast, which is so inexpensive. All right. Oh, boy, I poured too much. <laughs> Going to be a crazy morning. All right. Uh, oh, got to watch it. Got to watch it, man. Hateful Hulk says, good morning, Ron. Good morning, HH. Gooby Please says, good morning, Ron. I just bought some Old Crow and haven't opened it yet. Is it good? Uh, yes. To me, it's very good, <clears throat> especially with the price being so nice. I'm going to have to be very careful. I'll probably sip these down over the next two or three hours. Because I want to show y'all an IPA that I plan to review today. I probably won't post it today because I'm a little backed up on reviews. Let's see. Where am I on the video reviews? Let's see real fast. Bring up my documents. What's this one I have? Oh. Oh, well, it's probably one you'll never see. It's... Uh, Muses. Yeah, it's a beer called Muses. Belgian style ale, pale ale, uh, uh, blonde ale. And then I've got Britannia Porter and Imperial Porter. Both of those are from NOLA Brewing in New Orleans. So, but I bought an IPA yesterday at Matherns and I also bought some breakfast out, you know, founders breakfast out as to do a revisit. This IPA I bought was called it's called Elysian Day Glow. It's got a tiger with rays coming out of its eyes. So I'm going to ride, ride the tiger. <laughs> um with day glow. That's 7.5%. I said, ooh we all right, now, they're the same shade. Maybe the, maybe the old crow is a, just a ghost lighter, but it's so minimal, it's practically the same. Let's mix them up. But yeah, I'm trying to drink down that 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 uh, sacred bond brandy, you know the um, eight, uh, <laughs> the Christian Brothers sacred bond. Oh man, oh man, that stuff is too strong. It's a hundred proof. You might say a hundred proof. That's nothing. You're a wimp. You can't handle it. I'm not a wimp necessarily. I just can't handle it because it's too strong for me. I'd rather eighty proof. Eighty proof is just right there for me. 80 proof whiskey is perfecto. 92 proof, it's getting a little strong. I don't really like it. 100 proof, but I mean, I'll just lay down in the bed to watch the Tulane basketball game. Well, you know, of course, they had a big lead and they lost, of course. But uh, I was sipping on it and I said, you know, it has a lot of good flavors and good character and good quality and good everything, but it's just too strong and don't like it. I'll be so delighted when I finish drinking that thing. And then I tried that Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, 128 proof. Oh, that really was not pleasant at all. That's a gimmick. I mean, I'm sorry, Jared Kazanov, if you're watching Brother Knight. To me, it's a gimmick. They make a bourbon and they don't cut it like they traditionally do with water. And they say, look, we didn't cut it. It's really strong. Well, great. Hooray. Hooray. But it's too strong. It's just not right. It's not made right. It's like the beers that they don't filter and they don't put in a bright tank and they're all cloudy. And people say, look, it's so cloudy. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's just amazing that it's milky. I just can't get over it. I don't know why that's amazing. that you drink an unfinished beer, uh, you say, but it tastes like juice. It tastes like fruit juice. Well, 
you could just buy fruit juice, but Greenleaf gets really mad. Greenleaf 33. He says, you're just behind the times because that's the new wave. That's the new paradigm. The New England style IPAs. And you are a loser. You're on the loop. He's not saying I'm a loser in that sense. I'm on the losing end. I'm on the wrong side of history, in other words, with that. Well, okay. That's I'm, I'm very comfortable with being on the wrong side of history with that, actually. Very comfortable. And what, may you ask, is a trend monger? Okay. Um, said Frank Zappa, what is a trend monger? All right. Um, you know, listen to the story of Gregory Peckery, then come at me. <laughs> oh, how much is Old Crow in Louisiana? Says Gooby Pill, please, please. Oh, about eight ninety nine a bottle at Winn Dixie. It's really cheaper than that because you can get a one thousand. 750 you see this is a, a 750 milliliter bottle okay so it's 9.99 all right fine very nice but you can go to walmart and get 1750 milliliters that bottle plus a thousand extra milliliters get it for only about sixteen dollars. I think it's fifteen ninety nine. Might be sixteen ninety nine, but I believe it's it's not that much. It's fifteen ninety nine. It's um, and then you can go to Winn Dixie and they have their own three year age three year age Kentucky straight bourbon. That's like one thousand seven hundred fifty. You know the one point seven five o milliliters uh, liters. 1,750 milliliters, and it's 13.99. Uh, yeah, I said that right. 13.99. Winn Dixie brand. You say Winn Dixie brand? They have their own distillery? No, 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 no. It's coming from Buffalo Trace, Sazerac. If you read the bottle, it says Worldwide Brands. There's no such company. It's Buffalo Trace. It's Sazerac. It's either coming from Barton 1792 Distillery in Bardstown, or it's coming from uh, Buffalo Trace in Frankfort, Kentucky, and they're bottling it maybe up the road in Louisville or not up the road, but down the road, I guess you'd say, or west, west bound on the highway. All right, let's get down to this taste challenge. I have to do a beer review. I have to go walk a mile and a half. I might go to the city. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> might go to the city today, somewhere out on the horizon. Way beyond the neon lights. Okay, um, far beyond the neon lights. Um, this smells very caramel -y. Dried fruit. Dried shook, you know, the candied uh, fruitcake fruit and the dried flowers. It smells so much like Old Crow because that was what I wrote when I did my written review on Proof 66. Too bad, it looks like Proof 66 is going bye-bye. They're trying to sell their website. After 10 years, I guess they're tired of it. They probably didn't make any money. <laughs> they're kind of like the beer advocate, rate beer of uh, whiskey and other liquor. And they have a lot of reviews, but it's not a whole lot. Like each whiskey you look up might be at the most 20 reviews. You know, you go on beer advocate, it could be 3,000 reviews. So I guess it didn't really take off. I wasn't able to find any other whiskey review sites or liquor review. They have whiskey.com, but it's so unworkable. I mean, they're so user unfriendly with their, the way they have it set up. I was trying to, I said, you know what? I'm quitting this site. I'm never going back to it. I just never looked at it again. It's not, 
it's not like rape beer and beer after you can just easily write the review and it's done. Over there, you got to go through all these different steps. I said, oh, no, uh -uh. like that guy that started Sipsters. That was terrible. <laughs> all right, so that's got to be Old Crow, but let's keep going. Oh, oh, well, this has got to be redemption because it's got such a strong, spicy black, you know, spice, black pepper, spicy rye note. And all that corn. Corn, 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 corn. I mean, it's like liquid grits. And it's stronger in the aroma. It's got to be redemption. Now, you like grits. I like to eat grits, you know, with like some ham in it or hog's head cheese or cheese, and naturally hot sauce and black pepper. But I don't know about drinking grits. And it's really comical, you know, people will say, oh, beer, it's got corn in it. This beer, whatever beer, it has corn in it. It's terrible. It's not our true beer. You know, they'll say that. It has an adjunct. Stinking corn. I'm going to go drink something good. I'm going to drink bourbon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't drink beer with corn in it. Go drink bourbon because that's like almost all corn. But that's okay. But why bring up those little inconvenient truths, <laughs> as Al Gore would say? Not that he would entertain any inconvenient truths. All right. Um, well, this is corn also, <laughs> very corn oriented. Uh, yeah, 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 it's got to be old crow. <laughs> it's mellow in the mouth. So now the old crow does have a pretty good and noticeable rye spice. I'd love to try the old crow reserve, the black label age six years, which nobody ever sees. <laughs> Um, uh, there's a little menthol here and there's an underlying, um, let's be frank, <laughs> there's an underlying mossiness, cellar mold, uh, 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 you know what I'm about to say, that Jim Beam taste to it because you may or may not know that Old Crow has been owned by the Jim Beam company since 1987. Yeah, it's so much like Jim Beam. Okay. Now, do you like Jim Beam? Some people say, I don't like Jim Beam. And some people do like it. <laughs> All right. Uh. Oh, mama. I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of the law. Um. Yeah, okay. Lots of strong liquor. It tastes like it's 92 proof, you know. Very strong. It's got that, like, wax. <laughs> it's like a waxy quality. I don't know what it's like, wax. You ever eat wax? No, I don't either, but it's a waxiness. Like I used, I said that old 1973 chewing wax. You know, they got chewing gum, right? But they used to sell chewing wax for like Halloween and it was shaped like lips and people would chew on it. It had a lot of flavor in it, but it would die quick. And then you'd just be chewing the wax. <laughs> it was strange. I guess you could still buy it. Um, uh, duh, 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 duh. Mm. Oh, right, the big question. Which one's better? Oh, well, now. Oh, which one's better? Okay. Oh, well. Uh. Ta da.
Ta-da. All kidding aside. Um, oh, well, I guess it's a tie, more or less. A tie. They both taste pretty good, although, honestly, I don't really think that the Old Crow is any better than the Barton American. And that was five dollars ninety nine cents a bottle, and it was six thirty four after tax. No, six thirty five after tax. After the, I paid tax, it was six dollars thirty five cents, and I don't see why this is appreciably better. Now, I don't think I need to be putting a straight bourbon in a taste challenge against American whiskey, a blend aged three years, uh, but it could be interesting. Who, right here in the chest, the upper chest. Oh, the burn, the burn, the burn, the horror, the horror. No, not the horror. Good morning, J Dog. Enjoy your day. Thanks, Joshua. Enjoy your day. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this day, but it's all contingent upon weather patterns as they develop across the morning. Okay, you can see the daylight coming in. Oh, I don't know. I'm starting to get confused now. You say, oh, you drank too much. No, 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 no. I started to get confused on the second round of sips, honestly, but I was trying to cover it. I was trying to play it off with uh, all that little jocularity, you see. No, but no, no, no. This has got to be redemption. It's just too got. It's, it's just too got, right? <laughs> How do you like that? It's just too got much high rock. The whiskey ain't affecting me. No, um, no, too much rye. That's okay. I wouldn't pay twenty-three dollars a bottle, though. I mean, I did. I'm saying I wouldn't do it again. No way, Jose. And Mathern's they got one bottle left of the regular Redemption rye. One. They've been having that one bottle on the counter for like a month. They they sold all the rest. They all just went. The high rye was gone. The uh. The Redemption Rye was gone except for that one bottle. And then there's a third one. I can't remember what that third one's called. And then that one was gone right away. But I feel sorry for that one little lonely bottle of Redemption Rye. And you're saying, oh, you ought to buy it. Oh, I don't think so. Not for 23 bucks. Nope. But it is aged three years at least. I think that one's three or six. I don't know. It's moot. The point is moot because I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to try it. Somebody asked you this morning. So the point is mute, mute, M-U-T-E. I said, no, you mean the point is moot. Moot, that means like, you know, it's irrelevant to the situation at hand. Mute means like you can't hear, you can't speak. Ah, what chihuahua. Oh boy, this is not good. <laughs> well, I did say there was a tie, so I feel a little better. <laughs> uh oh. Yikes, in a minute. Oh, look, look over there at the weather. Oh my gosh, I got it backwards. <laughs> oh, wah, 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 wah. This is redemption, <laughs> and this is old crow. Oh, uh. <laughs> now, uh, uh, why can somebody explain why this one, which is touted as just a sour mash bourbon, straight bourbon, has more rye flavor than the one that's touted as high rye? Can, can you explain that to me? <laughs> now, I went through this whole protocol, this regimen, this uh, scenario, <laughs> this exercise. And I poured them correctly. I poured the redemption in the right label and everything. 
man, you know, it's really weird because uh, redemption, there's a, oh, it's high rye. And, and what did they say on their website? It's more rye than what, something like you can't get enough rye. And so we, we pushed it to the limit of what rye is allowed in a bourbon. Well, that's baloney because um, they're saying right here, it's 36% rye and it's 60% corn. Well, that's not the limit. <laughs> if they wanted to go full bore to the limit, it would be 49% rye because the only requirement for bourbon is it has to be 51% corn. The other grains are irrelevant, it, they're immaterial. It doesn't matter. So you could make it, if you wanted to go full bore, you, you could make it 51% corn and 49% straight rye whiskey. Now, but that's just a fact. This is not conjecture. This is not just my opinion. My opinion, it doesn't really matter. This is the fact because I know what the law says. That's where we got into that big debate with some guys and they, they would tell me I, wrong, I was wrong and I said, I'm not wrong. I'm right about if Jack Daniels was a bourbon. I said, it is a bourbon. And they were saying, well, and th their argument, get this, was, well, people don't view it that way. <laughs> now, that's, that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean it's not a bourbon because people don't view it that way. Of course they don't view it that way because it isn't marketed that way. Okay, so, I don't know, man. I think getting confused with them is even more of an indictment against the uh, the 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 redemption because I mean it's all this marketing and there's they got this beautiful bottle, this medicine bleep type bottle, right? And they're talking about oh yeah, you know it's uh, it's spectacular and it <laughs> it's high rye and it's the upper limits and all this stuff. And then here's homely, you know, old crow, this homely little bottle, an old man bourbon that in the whiskey world, people look down on that. Like, oh, well, <laughs> well, we, we drink credible products in our group. But yet. It goes toe to toe with the good, the, 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 you know, the medium grade. The low grade beats the medium grade. Oh, well, ain't that too bad. Keeps happening now. I know what some of the detractors are gonna say. Oh, well, that's you, cause you always go to bat for the cheap brands. You're just a hack, uh, uh, what do you call it, a hack. Uh, um, yeah, hack, like you you just make the videos because you're probably getting paid by the companies to tout low-end products. I've actually had another beer reviewer to say that. I was getting paid. But, um, of course, he's wrong, and I'm not getting paid. I wish I was. I'd make 10 videos a day. I wouldn't make one every, you know, I wouldn't do it four times a week. I'd do it 10 times a day. No, I'm not a hack for uh, low-end brands. Uh, they are speaking for themselves. I'm just doing it, and that's how it's coming out. And I'm doing it a blind in a blind taste test, so I have no, I'm not cheating, and I have no incentive to cheat. And even if I did have an incentive to cheat, I wouldn't cheat. So um, don't don't be angry with me. Be angry with yourself for paying sixty dollars for something that may not be any better than something you could have bought for ten dollars. Now, hey. The same thing happens in beer. Of course, with beer, you got to really watch out because your low end beers can can certainly be ghastly. You know what I mean? Like bordering on undrinkable. Up to undrinkable. I'm looking at a product right there. Nightmare, a nightmare product. It's low end and it, and it, and it lives up to its re reputation. Jaguar malt liquor from Minhas. Nice looking label now, I gotta say that, but it's horrendous. I poured out two cans and I didn't buy that to pour it out. I was really angry. I poured two things down the drain, two cans down the drain. I said, you know, that was a waste of money. But then 
you, here's another Lewin, uh, St. Ides Gold beer. Look at that, St. Ides Gold. And I paid, what, $3.99 for a six pack on Canal Street, New Orleans? It's no longer produced. This is what, about 5% alcohol, 4.8% alcohol. St. Ives Brewing Company, Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, right. And it's weird because it's St. Ives Brewing Company Limited. That's like a Canadian designation. America would be incorporated. You know, the United States would be incorporated. So that's, it's like it was registered in Canada. But uh, it was low in, but yet it tasted really good. The whole six pack. And I thought, ah, I'm going to keep buying this St. Ives Gold and I'm going to talk to people about it. <laughs> yeah, never saw that again. The Crooked Eye Beer. It's really a fantastic label to, because it's talking about brewed with term care and the finest water, hops, and barley for a distinctive yet refreshing flavor. It's got all this stuff on there. St. Ives Brewing Company, Detroit, Michigan. That's Stroh's. And that brewery shut down. Uh, a family tradition of brewing since 1856. <laughs> There's the giveaway. Because <laughs> St. Ives didn't come out till 1987. It's Stroh's, you see? You see, there's more to this. <laughs> uh, dedicated to the spirit of competition and champions past, present, and future of St. Ives Gold. You see, it's a gold medal, right? Olympics. It was 1996. The Olympics, gold. Uh, apparently, this was made in honor of the Olympics. Uh, it says up here, Crooked Eye. It's got it on the label. Crooked Eye, the St. Ives Brewing Company trade trademark. It's got a man running, a medal with a man running, and it says... Premium quality. Oh, yeah, two men running towards the center. Premium quality. Oh, it's a fascinating can. Fascinating. It's fascinating. All right. Uh, but the whole point there is that uh, if you see something like that, don't, don't say I'll get it later because you ain't going to see it later. Get it now. I learned my lesson with the Miller Red Label, 1980. 80. 1996 Miller Red. I said, I'll get it next time. No more next time. Never saw it. The Schlitz uh, Red Label. They used to make Schlitz in a Red Label uh, can from 1982 to 96. 82 to 96. And I said, it was like a burgundy. No, it wasn't burgundy. It was red. It was, it was red. A deep red, brick red, Alabama Crimson Tide red type thing. And I said, I'll get it next time I go to the store. Oh, my goodness. It was replaced before I got back to the store. And I never saw it again because it was never produced again. So you'll get burned. You'll get burned if you pass up. Same thing with liquor. Same thing with liquor, whiskey. If you see a strange looking brand, don't hesitate because you're not going to see it the next time you go back. And then it's going to be in your head for the rest of your life. Why didn't I buy it? Same with me with the Schlitz Red Label. Why, why? It could be in your collection right now. <laughs> and you could be showing everybody. Thank goodness I bought that Schlitz World War II 50th anniversary can now. What a tragedy that would have been if I hadn't bought that six pack because I'm looking at it right there. It's the, it was a throwback can from their 1945 design. And it was their World War II series and uh, it was produced in, in memory of the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II, 1945 to 95. But they ran those cans for about a year. And I was in Hammond, Louisiana at Circle K, or was it Exxon? And uh, they had the six pack. And I saw that and I was stunned, you know, so I said, I'm buying it. Never, ever saw that again in my life. That's it. Okay, so anyway, enough jibber jabber. Uh, I couldn't tell them apart. I got them mixed up. Once again, redemption ain't cutting it. It is not making it. Now, what's it going to do against Jim Beam? I don't know. 
I'm not too confident. How's it going to do against Jim Beam? Choice. I think it's going to get murdered, and I think I'll be able to easily tell him apart. That's my prediction. How about Jack Daniels? I don't think I'll get those mixed up any kind of way. I don't think Jack Daniels is your typical bourbon. It has its own unique flavor, and I don't think I would get that mixed up. Jack Daniels Green Label, even more so. You're not going to mix. You're not going to confuse Jack Daniels Green Label with other things. It's too differentiated. It's not like other things. And if you ever see a Jack Daniels Green Label with that gold print, don't wait. Don't play around. You're going to be so sorry. All right. Enough of that. So thank you. Um, yeah, I'm a little shook up, uh, honestly, by this because I never dreamed it would happen. I was very confident going in. I said, oh, yeah, I'll be able to tell them apart. No problem. No problem. Wrong. Very devastatingly wrong. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. Look at the daylight now. It's daytime. It was dark. It was mostly dark. Now it's daytime.